Uh, good morning. Good morning to everyone, and, and thank you for coming. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today, although I wish it was under better circumstances. We're joined today by our former police chief, Bob McElroy of Alpha Project, representatives of our hospitality communities, and neighbors that have been affected by the dire humanitarian crisis in our city, which our city has failed to act upon. I stand here before you this morning to express my deep concern of the proposal that is being put forth at the City Council later this week, because it doesn't go far enough to truly address the situation. The situation we face demands immediate action. Homelessness in San Diego has reached crisis levels with a staggering increase in the number of unsheltered individuals and in, cross in encampments that are scattered throughout every, virtually every single neighborhood in the city. This is a humanitarian crisis that should never be allowed in a city as prosperous as ours. The statistics are alarming and the numbers that we are seeing, particularly this growth is astronomical. It's devastating. It's devastating for the people on the streets and it's devastating for our families and our neighborhoods and our businesses. Downtown homelessness alone has nearly tripled since 2020 and the number of unsheltered individuals has risen at a rate far exceeding the national average. The number of homeless individuals living on our streets, our canyons and in vehicles has increased by a shocking 32% in San Diego. Downtown San Diego has seen almost 2,000 people now living unsheltered and in sidewalk encampments. And tragically, homeless veterans increased up to 814 from 686 last year, a 17% increase. The reality is we now see encampments in almost every corner of our city, from residential areas to commercial parks to rivers, our freeways. Every single neighborhood in San Diego has now been affected. And to compound this crisis, the number of homeless deaths and fatalities from substance abuse such as fentanyl has absolutely skyrocketed. All of us, all of us cannot turn a blind eye to the devastating consequences if we keep allowing this proliferation to happen in our city. I want to acknowledge the initiative of Councilmember Whitburn in addressing the, this homeless crisis. And he's proposed, as you know, a solution of enforcing the unsafe campy ordinance 24 seven, only in designated areas. That falls short. We need attention to the entire city because homelessness is not confined to one specific area. It affects all neighborhoods across our city. What we need is consistent citywide action, citywide action. We need policies that provide shelter and support for all residents of San Diego, both sheltered and unsheltered alike. To truly combat homelessness, we need to combine a camping ban with a clear mandate, a clear mandate for the city to construct sufficient shelter bed capacity. And that's what we're talking about, capacity at scale. Scale like what we see right behind us here at Alpha Project. Bridge shelters, such as the one we're here today, with treatment that is on site for mental health and substance abuse. That's what works. We need more of them. That's why we're here today. Because if we do not increase this to the scale that matches the sense of urgency and the emergency that is on our city streets, we're never going to get a handle on this problem. Again, these bridge shelters work. They transform lives. We need more of them. Without this expanded capacity, any attempt to enforce an unsafe camping ordinance or ban on city property will unfortunately be rendered ineffective. And that's the worst thing for everyone. Those individuals that are on the streets and our families in our neighborhoods and our businesses. We simply cannot displace individuals without offering them an alternative. And that's why these bridge shelters are so incredibly important. The Supreme Court, of course, has ruled that the city cannot enforce 
homeless individuals off the streets if there are not available shelter beds. It is clear, has been clear for quite some time, it's even more clear now that we need more shelter beds combined with treatment to provide the necessary support and to comply with all legal requirements. Let me provide you a couple of quick numbers that demonstrate the success of bridge shelters like this and the importance of implementing these solutions. Since its establishment in 2017, and I was here when we established this bridge shelter, and there was a lot of concern at the time, would it work? It's been an incredible success. It's been an incredible success due to the support, the day in and day out folks that you see at Alpha Project here who care, who are out on the streets every single day, who understand there need to be consequences for actions. The Alpha Project who understands we're gonna love you and we're gonna give you tough love. And we're gonna give you that support. We're gonna provide the treatment services here. This model works. It needs to be expanded. And you have the opportunity to see some of the individuals who are doing it day in and day out. They're truly heroes in what's happening with our homeless community. They're not just talking, they're actually doing. And that's why we need to expand this capacity. Since its establishment in 2017, this bridge shelter has done close to 500 placements to permanent supportive housing destinations. This was an incredible portion of everything that happened during and post COVID in Alpha Project. We couldn't have done it without them. And all of the individuals that they have placed, it's a testament to the effectiveness of bridge shelters and the importance of implementing comprehensive proposals and solutions with emphasis on the comprehensive. Let us use this as a success, as an inspiration of what we can do to find lasting solutions and to get people off the streets now, not months from now, and to get individuals off the streets in all neighborhoods of our city, not just certain neighborhoods. Every neighborhood deserves that help and support, as does every individual who's on the street deserves a place like this bridge shelter and Alpha Project to help stabilize, to get back on their feet, to turn their lives around. That's why this is so incredibly important. And in conclusion, I wanna reiterate the importance of taking meaningful action now, not months from now, to address what's happening in every part of our city. We need less empty rhetoric and more enforceable, actionable measures that will improve livability, security, and economic vitality for all residents of San Diego. So I urge the council later this week to evaluate, to reevaluate this proposed ordinance and focus on comprehensive solutions like additional bridge shelters and bringing this to scale for the well-being and the dignity of our homeless population. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite our former Chief of Police, Shelley Zimmerman, to share some of her further insights into this. Chief? I'll tell you, as a longtime independent, I'm not here for politics. I'm here because as a 35-year law enforcement professional, I care deeply about helping to address our homeless crisis. During my 35 years as a San Diego police officer and continuing today, I've interacted, interacted with likely tens of thousands of San Diegans, which include our homeless population. I have heard concerns from community members from across our entire city about how the homeless and tent encampments with the crime and disorder that come with them negatively impact their quality of life and their entire neighborhood. From this firsthand experience, I have also seen what has worked and what has not worked to address the homeless crisis. So what has worked? An available shelter bed with adequate wraparound services to address the challenges of the homeless individual. And importantly, clear and consistent homeless intervention enforcement with consequences for those experiencing homelessness who refuse help throughout the entire city of San Diego. Now, what has not worked? First and foremost, not enough shelter beds with wraparound services to address the homeless 
individual challenges and the lack of consistent intervention enforcement with consequences for those experiencing homelessness who refuse the help and resources throughout our entire city of San Diego. So in Gloria's and Whitburn's proposal, if there is no available shelter bed and a homeless person is in what they deem a sensitive area, they will be required to move to another area. If their proposal passes as written, this will literally pit street against street and neighborhood against neighborhood throughout the entire city of San Diego. You have to ask yourself, why would Gloria and the city council think that it is good policy to allow anyone to squalor anywhere within our entire city? They shouldn't. Here is likely to be a recurring scenario if their proposal passes in its current form. A family is out for a walk and live on a street that Gloria and the city council deem not sensitive enough. One night they suddenly out for their walk, they see a homeless tent. The next night they see several more homeless tents and then several more. And before you know it, it is a full blown tent encampment. They call the police. The police respond. However, if there are no shelter beds available, the police hands will be tied because Gloria and the city council have deemed their street acceptable for anyone experiencing homelessness. In this scenario, I am confident that the families who live on that street would not appreciate this sensitive distinction. It is time to stop with the half-hearted proposals and rhetoric. Here is a solution to prevent this scenario from happening. Gloria and the city council must hold themselves accountable by mandating, let me repeat, by mandating that they will provide enough shelter beds now. So when a person experiencing homelessness accepts the offer of a shelter bed, there will be, they will immediately be able to receive it. And when a homeless person refuses a shelter bed, which many of them will, there must be intervention and enforcement with a tough love approach, along with consequences throughout the entire city of San Diego. I would now like to welcome Bob McElroy, the CEO of the Alpha Project, to say a few words. From my own audience, I don't have any script. Um, where do I start? Uh, well, Kevin and I and Shelly, uh, back in the day, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we actually reduced homelessness there for a while in San Diego. Um, after Hep A, you guys know what happened there. We did 20th and B. We had 30 families and 56 uh, kids. And at the end of that run, um, our donors housed every one of those families. Uh, a lot of people found jobs. Um, a lot of people, it was, it was a starting point, point for folks. And that's, we've always said that at Alpha. Most of us have come from uh, the streets. We have lived experiences. That's why we're so successful. We know what it's like to be disenfranchised, and be dehumanized. Um, and I talk to folks out here all the time. It, it's, 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 just a, it's just criminal to see how many people die out here. But as I've as I said numerous times over the past couple of years, whoever came up with uh, Narcan should win some kind of worldwide award because just on our side of the house when our outreach team jump out and somebody's actually dead and they shove Narcan up their nose sometimes three or four doses and that person comes back to life um, that's a miracle the unfortunate part of that is many a time many times those people who are in their addiction go to the emergency room and two days later they're back here on the street slamming heroin with Narcan ended up their veins again it was just an end endless cycle uh, if anybody thinks this is okay, then you're complicit in this. If, if that was your loved one, and I'm speaking to, to anybody that has a, any skin in this game here, um, they're complicit in that. If you think that that's okay for your husband and wife, grandma, grandpa, uh, mother, sister, brother, children, if that's okay to you, it's despicable because it's not. We have to have more facilities. I, I have that sign right behind you there. Back when Kevin called me at FA, 
and we had a bunch of folks in town. It's not a shameless plug. This is what people asked me seven years ago. If you could do anything, is the right side up? It is Monday. If you could do anything, Bob, what would you do? And so we had our architect try up a, try up a rendering of 20th and B. And this is the front four and a half acres of Philly facility down there that is not designated parkland. A facility that incorporates 600 units of permanent supportive housing, transitional housing, um, barrack style uh, housing, family housing, medical clinics uh, for, for people and for pets, um, storage facilities. There's even an area on here for camping for people who are still trying to, we're still resistant to making that transition from from the, the, the campsites to living inside. But um, with all the money that's been spent over the last seven years, this facility could have been done five, six times over. We're hoping and praying. I, we, we're seeing that they're gonna do some campsites. Uh, nobody's called me. We're the only ones in town here that's, uh, that's done a tent facility at 20th and B. Uh, as I said, no one's called us to ask what our opinion would be on how we would design these things. I went and looked at both sites, and I see a lot of flaws and a lot of challenges that are going to take place. Um, but as I've said before, different interviews we've done, it's, if, it's, it's amazing to me that, that folks who make these decisions have no practical experience working with this population. And the challenge for us as providers is to uh, implement policies that we know are not good in order to help the folks that we can. Um, that was one of the things I think that we had the team here. We, we talked constantly about how you do these things. I would never tell anybody how to be mayor. I would certainly never tell anybody how to be a police chief or a reporter or a camera or anything else. All I know is this, and, uh, and, and, and I'm speaking for other providers who voice their opinion off the record. The same frustration um, that people don't ask us how to do this. We've had over 65 cities come to this one site find out how we do things. 80 delegations, seven countries from Africa came here to see how we do this over here. And yet, no one here asks us here how to do this when we've got 37 years of demonstrated experience and capacity. Uh, I find that amazing and frustrating as well. Uh, hopefully the phone will ring and maybe we can, well, here's another thing. And you, I know, thank God this is on tape. You can edit out everything I say. But, you know, buying two, two of these shelters here that are storage shelters uh, for hardware in the military and not made for human habitation. This one is. I designed this one when we first went in. Um, the other two that went up, the taxpayers have had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to put in ventilation systems and stuff that did not exist. That they would have simply asked us going in, what kind of facility do we buy? What kind of uh, tent do we buy? We would have told them. So it's I'm not, I actually am knocking people, but why don't you ask the folks that do this every day? I mean, have a have a have a, a, a roundtable of providers, you know, that actually get their hands dirty, that actually work for the population, and come up with some ideas on how to do things. I think we'd save everybody a lot of grief. We'd certainly take care of a lot more people, and save the taxpayers a lot of money. With that, Bob, don't be like Bob. Bob introduces me. <laughs> uh, Owner of the local. Thank Mina. Good morning. Um, I believe I was asked to be here to represent the tens of thousands of business owners here in San Diego. Not only do I own just the local downtown, but between me and my partners, we have 12 restaurants and bars all throughout San Diego County, and every single one of them has been affected by this homeless crisis. Um, fourth. Fourth and C uh, has just completely been a nightmare. And if we think that walking to work and just walking over passed out, drug-induced people is common, uh, we're, I think we've just become completely desensitized. Um, every day we come to work, it's dangerous. Um, it's scary. Uh, I can't keep employees. And I said this once in an interview, If I, if my business fails downtown, and all of them really, but if my business fails downtown, it's not because I'm a bad operator or I don't have the qualifications to operate. I've been in this industry too long. It's because the city has completely failed us. We don't have the tools to, to stay safe. 
nor can I hire the right people because they're not willing to come and work downtown. So something's got to be, something's got to change. Um, politically, we all need to come together and make the right decisions for the city, regardless of what side we stand stand on. Um, and that's about it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all for being here. We're happy to answer any questions. So I'll start. Um, so you said that you think there should be more shelter. How much more shelter do you think we need as a city to, you know, achieve the aims that you want to, which is allowing for more consistent enforcement and serving more folks? Yeah, we, we need several more of these. Um, Give me Lisa. a number. How well, many more beds? You see the need, and the, and the issue is that it's astronomical. Uh, look, we're going to need close to at least a thousand beds right away. Uh, and, you know, and I think, again, why we've been through so much is we remember we stood up in a, in a, in a matter of months after 20th and Viva. Uh, we know how to do this. This is not rocket science. These bridge shelters work. They save lives. Um, it gets people stabilized. It gets them back on their feet. Uh, that should be the minimum as we move forward. Yes, sir. So statistics show that during your tenure as mayor, there were more arrests on, on homeless compared to today. What's the reason for the concern today? I'll tell you, I was really proud that by working together with our providers, with our San Diego Police Department, we reduced homelessness. We reduced homelessness by double digits. We had very clear rules of the road, but there was no enforcement unless somebody turned down a place to go. And that's why it was so important to have a safe, clean, sanitary environment like you see right behind us. That's what we need in our city. We need more of it. And it was a concerted effort. It was our officers who do a fantastic job day in and day out. I cannot say enough about our homeless outreach team and our neighborhood policing division. Because those men and women that wear the badge that are out here on the front lines, they're our number one referral source to the shelters. That's what you need. That's what it works when it all goes hand in hand. Chief, anything else you want to say about neighborhood policing? <laughs> Incredible. I mean, well, first of all, to answer your question, you needed to have the political will and the courage to say that there was going to be clear and consistent enforcement throughout the entire city of San Diego. And in my remarks, that's exactly what I said, is that you have to have the clear rules of the, of, of the road. You know, violent crime and quality of life crimes, uh, both must be prosecuted. And as we talked about, no one uh, was uh, enforced upon unless they refused to accept the resources uh, and the shelter that was provided. And so that was the key, is that the courage and the political will to keep the consistent policies and then throughout the entire city to go ahead and enact those policies. I want to speak to that too. Go ahead. A lot of people think, you know, people are arrested and that's bullying and stuff. That's garbage many times. Um, we've had hundreds of people come into these facilities over the years. They got sick and tired of being bounced from one block to the other and or there's no detox beds in the city of San Diego. Did you all know that? There's 70 around the county, but none in the city of San Diego. And so we traditionally have had people come out of jail that have had that maybe five days, maybe two weeks. They had an opportunity to sober up and they don't want to go back to that. And so they give it a shot here. We even have some staff members that, that spoke to somebody in one of these articles over here about how he got sick and tired of being arrested for, you know, warrants or, you know, nominal things, illegal lodging and that kind of stuff. Um, and it saved his life. So I understand people, you know, want to play the, the card of, you know, everybody's getting arrested and not justified, nothing good comes of it. On the other hand, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of people get sober and get off their life, get on with their life simply because they had an opportunity for some sobriety and a clear head check to say they don't want to go back to that, they give us a shot. So one thing that's back with... Hold on, Lisa, I'll come back to you. Let's give some other folks. I, I'll, you know I've got a lot to go to. I will, well, I'll, try, we'll, I'll do one. We'll, we'll take some time saying after. that the Glory administration can identify a thousand beds right away? Of course you could, Ed. How do you do that? You have to have the political will that says we're going to stand up these bridge shelters just like we did several years ago. But you can't put it up to... I mean, these, they do take some time. They, they do, and which is why they should have been up 
earlier this year. And that's the point. The, 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 again, a, a proven model that works. And as Bob so eloquently said, as only Bob can, you had cities from all over the country that have come to talk to him, that have seen firsthand the life-changing work that happens at this bridge shelter. That's why you need more of them. We started with individual tent campsites, but we said we need a holistic place where you can bring all the services here in one place. That was the model and that was the experience of this gentleman here and his organization over 30 years that has really helped define what a best practice can be. So That's why we need more of these. Apologize. So would a compromise tomorrow, you, you acknowledge Whitburn's proposal, doesn't go far enough. So if, if the compromise were, all right, in the meantime, we're still going to have a supervised area and we're going to get rid of some of these sidewalk encampments absent the neighborhood versus neighborhood. But at some point, all right, we're going to identify these places and then we're going to get started on bridge shelters, which take time to get approval and location. Would that, would that satisfy what you're saying then? Yep. Well, all right, now we've got a comprehensive approach. It's not enough just to talk about it. You actually need to fund it. It needs to be in the budget. There are no dollars for bridge shelters in the current budget. Again, a model that works, that changes lives, that transitions people into housing, that gets them stable. We need that to move forward. So back when you were mayor, you had a lot more police officers. You had a fully staffed entity. Right. That is not the case anymore, and the cops are struggling just to respond to just regular right. calls of all sorts. So, how do you expect that they could go about consistently enforcing? Does former Chief Zimmerman have any suggestions on well, how that might work? Let me let me turn it over.